Now that we've created the structure and style for our web page, the next thing we want to do is build the actual game. And we're going to do that using JavaScript since we're controlling what actions happen when we click on these buttons. The first thing we need to start using JavaScript is the script tag. And the script tag is always going to go right above the end of the body here. So above this closing, this slash body here, we're going to create another tag called script. And it'll also have a closing tag. And just like in CSS, everything between the opening script tag here and the closing script tag here is going to be our JavaScript. The first concept I want to introduce you to in JavaScript is something called a variable. And you might have already seen variables before in math or something. Essentially, what a variable is, is just a thing that holds a value. So to create a variable in JavaScript, I can say something like let. Let is my keyword to create a variable. And then the name of the variable, which is going to be text, and I can set that equal to whatever I want. I'm going to set it equal to the word hello to start with and put a semicolon at the end. So let text equal hello. We create the variable called text and we set it equal to hello. This isn't going to just show up on our web page because now we're using JavaScript. We're not using HTML. So things we add don't just show up on the page. This is controlling the behavior of our web page, which means to make it show up, we're going to have to actually use some commands. And the command we're going to use is called console.log. And what I want to do is log the variable we have. So our variable is called text. So we log the variable text and that should print out hello because that's what text has been set equal to. Now, if we refresh it, you're going to see it's still not going to show up on this page. That's because console.log, all of our JavaScript stuff shows up somewhere else. If you right click on your Google Chrome page and you click inspect, you're going to get a little menu that looks something like this. You want to click over to the consoles tab right over here. And there you go. Now you can see the output of our console.log text. Hello. One of the things that's useful about variables is we can change them over time. So our variable starts out by being equal to hello, but then we can also say something like text equals text plus, and then we can add on something like everyone. And so then we can console.log text again. And What's happening here is we start with our variable text. We create it here. We set it equal to hello. We log it. We see hello. Then the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to take that variable text again, and we're going to set it equal to itself, what it was before, hello, plus this new word uh, that is space and everyone here. And so when we console.log here, what we should see is hello, everyone. Now, if I refresh my page, you'll see that that's exactly what happens. The next big JavaScript concept I want to talk about is functions. A function is essentially a set of instructions that we can run by calling that function. We take something complicated, like all of the commands we have here, we put them inside of a function, and then we can call that function to run all of those commands whenever we want with just one line of code. It's very useful and it helps us keep our code organized and clean. So I'm going to show you how we do that. To create a function, you're going to say the word function and then space, and then you're going to put the name of the function. So I'm going to call this function hello. And then you're going to put an opening and closing parenthesis. And after the parentheses, you're going to have an opening and closing set of curly braces. And now everything in between this opening curly brace here and the closing one down here is what's going to go inside of our function. It's what's going to happen every time we call this hello function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy and paste this into here. So control X to cut and copy and control V to paste. And now all that code is inside our function. Now you'll see if I save this and then I reload it over here, now nothing is printing at all. Um, that's because the function doesn't run all on its own. It's just like a definition over here. It's not doing anything until we actually call it and tell it to run. So now if I say hello, it's going to run all the code in this hello function. And so if we reload the page now, you'll see hello and hello everyone. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why is that useful? We just took something that was four lines of code and made it like eight lines of code instead. One of the answers is that there's a lot of reasons. One is it keeps our code really clean and consistent. Everything that is part of saying the word hello is now separate and in its own function over here. The other thing that's useful about it is we can now call this hello function whenever we want. So instead of having to type out all that code again and have like 30 lines of code saying doing the same thing over and over again, I can now just call the function three separate times and it'll do everything in that function three times, which is pretty useful. There's a lot of other applications and reasons to use functions, and those are going to become a lot more clear as we continue out. For now, I'm going to delete two of these functions. We don't need this many right now. A little earlier, I was talking about variables and how they can store all sorts of different values. 
It turns out one of the most useful things we can store in a variable is actually one of these tags. And what's great about storing one of these tags in a variable is that then we can go change things about that tag in our JavaScript dynamically. Like as the, whenever the user clicks a button, we could like change the paragraph to say something different whenever the button is clicked. It's a really useful thing to be able to do. What we're going to do is create some variables. The first one is going to be called let image. So we're going to use the let command to create the variable image. And what we're going to set it equal to is now, just like in CSS, where I had to select the buttons by IDs, I'm going to do the exact same thing in JavaScript. Of course, at the moment, our image doesn't have an ID. So we're going to go ahead and give it an ID real quick. And I'm just going to call it image. Now that we've created that ID, we can go back into our JavaScript and tell our JavaScript to find that image, this image, this element here, by its ID. To do that, we can say document dot get and then capital element and then capital B by and, and then capital I and D. And then what we're going to do inside of here is tell it what ID we're looking for. And the ID we're looking for is image. Now to prove that worked, I'm going to say console.log and I'm going to log our new variable we just created image. And if I reload the page, what you're going to see is that now JavaScript knows what part of the page it's looking at. It knows that this variable image is the same thing as this element image on the web page. And that's going to let us do some cool stuff like change things about the image. While we're at it, we're also going to need the paragraph element here to be able to be accessed and changed in our JavaScript as we move through these different scenes. And the idea I'm going to use for the paragraph is text. We'll call it text. So then I can also create a variable in my script here called text and set it equal to document dot get element by ID. And the ID we're getting is called text. Now, if I type text in here in my console.log and I reload it, you're going to see it now knows what element on the page we're referring to. So we can now change things about the text here too. We're going to do the exact same thing with the two buttons too. So let me say let button one equal document dot get element by ID. And we already have IDs for the buttons. They're called button one here and let button two equal document dot get element by ID. Ooh button two. Now we can move on to doing some really cool stuff. So go ahead and delete the code we have right here for now. Um, we're going to need to replace it with some other stuff. Basically, now that we have all these different elements saved as variables in our JavaScript, we can do all sorts of things to them. We can change them, but we can also listen for things happening to them. For instance, I can say button one, and then I can use the function add event listener. So dot add event with a capital E and then listener with a capital L. And then inside of here, what I can do is I can listen for a click. So I'm listening for a click. And then when I get that click, I'm going to run some function here. So this will be where we put the name of our function, but we need to actually write that function first. So let's create a new function. We'll call our function start because it's going to be the very first function that runs with the two uh, opening and closing paragraphs. And now in between these two opening and closing curly braces, let's go ahead and set our text, uh, our text's inner HTML. So what's inside, what this means is we take the text variable, which remember is referring to this paragraph tag here. And we're going to take the inner part of the HTML, which is what's right here. And we're going to set it equal to something different. We'll set it equal to you wake up on a forest road. Now, Whenever this click event happens, I can say comma, and now I can run the function I want to run. So I'm going to use start. We'll call the start function. So if I refresh my page and I click button one, now it changes that text to you wake up on a forest road, which is pretty cool. Of course, when we start our game, we don't actually want it to say hello, everyone. We want it to do this start function right away. So I'm just going to put start. And then right when we load our web page, it's going to call that function and set our inner text equal to you wake up on a forest road. Now that we've done that, we can also change these two buttons. So let's say button one and change its inner HTML. Also, let's say its inner HTML is going to be equal to keep walking. And that'll be our first choice is to keep walking. And then button two dot inner HTML will change that to turn around. 
Now if I reload my page, our buttons have actual names. But right now, when I click on these buttons, they're not going to do anything because they're not, we don't have any event listeners assigned. Nothing is listening for a click and then calling another function when we click on them. So what we're going to do is under here, we'll say button one dot add event listener. And then we're going to listen for a click just like before. And then we're going to say comma. And then here's where we're going to put the name of our next function, but we haven't actually written our next function yet. So let's go ahead and write uh, the other functions we want. So what would, what do we want to happen if we click button one here and we keep walking? So we'll create another function and it'll be called keep walking. And then inside of this function, we're going to set the text to something different. Uh, so in this one, we could set the inner HTML equal to what should happen if we keep walking, you get lost in the forest forever. Because I like to be as depressing as possible when I'm writing code. Now that we have our function written, we can say down here in our start function, when we press button one to keep walking, we can say comma, and then call the function keep walking. Now if I reload my page and I click keep walking, we get lost in the forest forever. Of course, when this happens, we'd probably also want our buttons to disappear. And we can do that really easily with JavaScript. In fact, we can say uh, button one dot style. And then we can say equals display colon none. Now, if you're paying attention, you might recognize that as actually a CSS rule, we can change CSS with JavaScript too, which is pretty cool. So now if I reload and I say keep walking, that button will vanish, we probably also want to have the other one vanish too. So we'll set button two style equal to display none. Also. So we keep walking. And there you go, you get lost in the forest forever. We're gone. We refresh the page, our CSS rules take over and our buttons come back. Let's make this other event work too, the turnaround event. So to do that, we'll say, we'll create another function. And this function will call turn around. And in this one, I'm going to say text dot inner HTML equals you fall out of the universe. No good endings in this game. Sorry. And then once again, I'm going to copy this right here, our button style one and button style two, we're going to both switch to display none because that'll be the end of the game. This is a really depressing game. Oops, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because we only have an event listener for button one. Remember, just creating the function doesn't actually call the function, we need to actually tell the function when it should run. So we'll say button two dot add event listener. And then we'll wait for a click. We'll listen for a click. And when we hear that click, we'll call the turn around function like that. Now when we reload the page and we click turn around, we fall out of the universe. One thing we're missing right now is that our images still aren't changing. So go ahead and go over to Pixabay uh, and find some images you want to use and download a few more images for your game that we can switch to. Make sure the images all show up in the same folder and make sure that they're named something nice like this, forest, the road, or wormhole. And now I already downloaded them, so I'm going to uh, add them right now. When the player chooses to keep walking, I want to switch to this forest backdrop here. So what I'm going to do is in the keep walking function, we also have our image here, so I can change things about the image. And what I'm going to change about the image is its source attribute. Remember the image has the SRC up here, which tells it what thing to load. I can change that to something else if I want. So I'm going to say image, which is the name of our variable here, our variable image that contains the element image. And I'm going to say image dot set attribute. And the attribute I'm going to set is the source SRC right here, SRC. And I'm going to say comma, and then what I'm going to set it to. And so what I'm going to set it to is forest dot, and I actually don't know what the extension is. So let's right click on it and click properties. And it'll tell us that is dot JPG forest dot JPG dot JPG. Now, if I save this and reload it and I click keep walking, we also change to our forest backdrop. Let's do this for turnaround also. So we'll say image dot set attribute. And we're changing the source of the image. Oop, I forgot my semicolons. We're changing the source of the image and we're changing it to, I think, wormhole. And then what's the extension? Wormhole.png. Wormhole.png. 
So if I reload and I click turn around, now we fall out of the universe into a wormhole. Those are the basics of creating the adventure game. In the next video, I'm going to add on a little bit more to this. We're going to add on a few more options. And I'm also going to teach you guys how to debug when things go wrong in your code and you don't know how to fix it. We're going to talk through that process a little bit.